The Unshackled Waves, episode 240. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, welcome to another Waves episode. We're arriving at the final week of this, the most craziest federal election I've ever experienced. So to catch up on the latest and to offer his own unique an analysis, I welcome to, for the first time on the show the report from Tiger Mountain host and also director of the Melbourne Underground Film Festival, Richard Walsoncroft. Welcome. Thank you, Tim. Uh, it's nice to be here. So, uh, yes, it's crazy election time in Australia. Should we talk about the uh, the best options for us um, people who have a nationalist patriot and, um, you know, nationalist economic orientation? Oh, well, yes, because the mainstream media says, oh, don't vote for these extreme minor parties. But Here as... we say you should vote for those extreme minor parties. <laughs> but as we've seen, the, the major parties, they haven't been selecting the, the, the best. There's been scandal after scandal. Yes, absolutely. Look, you know, it's been an interesting election. Um... Uh, I haven't been watching the mainstream narrative too much, but I did watch the debate between um, Bill Shorten and uh, ScoMo uh, on on the ABC. Did you watch that? No, I didn't get a chance to, to watch that. I was... I'll uh, give you my impressions. Um, I thought ScoMo was the strongest, um, which is good, because, I mean, I think, obviously, you know, Liberal or Labour are going to win the election, one of those two parties, and it would be much better, basically, if it was the Liberal Party for right-wing um, beliefs, I think, because they will at least side with this side of politics uh, as much as the Liberal Party normally does. Maybe a little bit more as populist nationalism seems to be rising as a kind of zeitgeist phenomenon all around the world. You'll see this begin to infiltrate into the Liberal Party itself. You know, obviously um, the removal of Malcolm Turnbull and uh, Julia Bishop from the um, body corpus of the, the Liberal Party is a great thing for nationalism within the Liberal Party because that opens the side, opens the door more to the Conservative side, um, the Peter Dutton side, let's call it, and the Tony Abbott side um, of the Liberal Party, which is the true conservative or more nationalist side of the Liberal Party. So um, I think um, I think that's good. Obviously, I would say generally in the House, it's probably best to vote Liberal in the sense this is a pretty serious election um, in relation to uh, Labor do have a strong chance of winning. They do have a chance of winning. Um, you know, you know how Australians are. They just switch every six to eight years. They switch, you know, I mean... Yeah, I've seen the uh, forum of undecided voters. Sky do, they have a focus group uh, every week and it's, they're just all, oh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, if they do this, then I might uh, vote for them. Like, that's sort of who the, the swinging voter they're aiming for. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, um, the Liberal Party, um, I, I still think, though... Have the momentum in this election, from what I've picked up. Um, obviously, Labor are the favourites at the moment, but they, they have a kind of good momentum, like you know, and they're coming into the uh, the last stretch. Um, Bill Shorten's is um, is is uh, well, as some memes have said on Facebook, he's like Billery. You know what I mean? Like he has yeah. an element of like he looks like he should win technically, but he might steal defeat from the jaws of victory. You know what I mean? Well, Shorten had a shocker start to the campaign. I mean, he misled uh, a voter about his tax policy. He yeah. he couldn't answer that Channel Ten reporter about the costings for his his climate policy. He did the same with yeah, Lee Sales on Seven Thirty Cars. It's insane. Yes. Yeah, nothing we do on global warming, even if it's real, which, you know, I don't think it is. I mean, I at least think it's over-exaggerated at the very very least, but I don't even believe the whole narrative of, of global warming. It, it's clearly, like, whatever Australia does, if we were to double our emissions as a nation, or, or make them zero, it would make fuck all difference, even if global warming is real. So I don't understand this insane desire, this rush towards... Um, uh, and it's extremely expensive. It's, I don't know what the actual, the, the budget, uh, I think he's releasing his costings today, yeah. but it's got to be between a quarter of a billion dollars to a billion dollars is what it will cost the Australian people. I mean, a trillion dollars. Sorry. Well, the, the Easter and Anzac break came at the, the best time for Shorten because yeah. he's managed to avoid any major slip ups since then. And mm -hmm. I agree that Morrison has probably won the campaign. Well, he was always the better campaigner. Yeah. He's the more authentic, but Shorten Yeah, he's kind of got a... He hasn't been as bad as he could have been. Short, yeah, I agree, I agree. He hasn't been as bad as maybe he could have been, but Shorten really does have a charisma problem. He has virtually zero charisma. And um, he has the personality of an old sock. And um, 
Uh, but ScoMo, he's grown on me. When ScoMo first took power, I wasn't that kind of wrapped in him. But I've seen him in the campaign. He comes across as a kind of conservative Christian dad. You know what I mean? And you uh, can see how that might appeal to people. He hasn't uh, put much of a defense up of Israel Folau. Said, like, oh, he hasn't been very sensitive. He's basically just put a mediocre yeah. defense of religious freedom. I mean, obviously... Scomo comes from a conservative background, but he was Turnbull's anointed successor. So he he's been like he's been embraced uh, multiculturalism. Well, uh, they all do that. I mean, they all do that. But yeah, there, there's been no like, radical move to to bring the bring the Liberal Party back to its conservative well, sure. roots. But then again, maybe it's you know. For that to be achieved, it would need to be done in stages, and I think just moving it a little bit further right at the moment. And actually, in the in the debate, he did defend Israel Fellow, and he did speak about religious freedom, and he did say if the liberals get in, and even Bill Shorten agreed with him. But then he, and then even Bill Shorten said um, that he had a pro kind of problem with what happened with Israel. But then he said, oh, I understand that people have the right to express this kind of view. So even fucking Bill Shorten was technically, because um, it obviously is an issue of religious freedom. People who are Christian conservatives think what israel i mean i'm a christian but i don't i wouldn't necessarily agree with that particular statement but i don't have any fucking problem with people expressing it i don't have a problem with you know muslims who want to you know be even more radical than that but like you know the actual belief in it i mean if they have that belief they're welcome to say it good luck to them but like um you know i don't know i mean i don't have a problem with people's beliefs i don't have a problem until they start acting on them my point is obviously that Scott Morrison, he is a bit more conservative, but there's still a long way to go. I mean, the, sure. the fact that Scott Morrison announced that One Nation would be preference below the Liberal Party. That's ridiculous. And you mean Labor. Running is dead last uh, in, in all their how to vote cards. Yes, yes. Well, that is ridiculous. And they should actually, ch if they were to change that, they would stand a much stronger chance of winning. I think the Nationals have um, uh, preferenced the uh, One yes, Nation. the LNP have done their, yes, their so own that's thing. Good. That's good news. But yeah, look, um, they've made a big mistake there. Um, they could cost them the election by not preferencing One Nation and putting like the Greens above One Nation. Are they fucking kidding? Oh, it's just below uh, Labor. Yeah, they they didn't go as far as uh, putting mm. One Nation below the Greens. Oh, well, let's talk about One Nation. You know, because they're um, obviously they've been subject to that stitch up in the media, um, which is um, which I will happily declare here on. The Unshackled, which was foreign interference in our elections. There should be a fucking, you know, like, we should have our Mueller investigate well, what happened there. Was... That was an absolute disgrace, the way those scumbags from Qatar attempted to take down our Pauline, the great hero, the great nationalist hero of Australia, who should be our Prime Minister, if there was a just God in this universe. Well, it was entrapment in its purest form. I mean, if... If this Roger Mueller, this oh. fake uh, gun lobbyist, if he didn't exist, then there, there'd be no story. And I know, it was they, absolute entrapment. Yeah, and they claim that Ashby... Fruit and, of a poison tree, mate. Fruit and of a poison Dixon tree. solicited the, the money. But what it was is that they were just fantasizing. Well, if we had $10 million, oh, yeah. we could win this. Well, if we had $20 million, we could we could do this. Well, if you had, like, all the money Clive Palmer is like, yeah, of sure. course. Like, that's what they were doing. If they were just hypotheticalizing but of course mm. the the way al jazeera put it it's like oh al jazeera man. please what a gl insulting globalist arab i mean the idea that we in my opinion anyone who's a nationalist if, if you've got some news coming from that particular fuck off you know like do the exact opposite i mean i don't care if they revealed that i don't know who's the guy malcolm somebody other who went to the strip club i don't care if he's a fucking serial steve killer dixon. steve dixon like Vote for, well, you don't have to vote for him, but still do not allow that scandal because it is a deliberate political um, interference in Australian elections from one of these royal Arab states, which is essentially Saudi Arabia, because Qatar works for Saudi Arabia. Who yeah. are you kidding? Uh, and they employ a lot of ex-ABC and BBC oh, journalists. Uh, makes me sick even they, thinking Basically, about these, well, you know, supposedly social progressive leftist journalists, they accept all the the Arab oil Arab, blood money. Arab, the Saudi, I mean, Saudi Arabia is possibly the most evil country on earth. Mm. And that's saying something, because there are a couple other evil ones we won't mention. But, you know, they're possibly the most evil nation on earth. And they're behind Qatar and all those Arab states, um, you know, that are kind of involved in a sort of collective of, I guess, Islamic radicalism and a kind of royal feudalism, you know. And they're terrible. And, and they are basically the exact opposite of any left winger on the planet. They're more right wing than the alt right, like a hundred times more right wing. They're absolutely insane organizations and countries but um and the fact that they're now directly trying to influence our election you should do the exact opposite to what those people are trying to do because that clearly tells you that they are worried about this and um, i mean all the you know the muslim immigration to 
Western civilizations is essentially a strategy of Saudi Arabia. Um, I, I know what's happened. Um, what's happened is, is uh, Israel has been given the whole Middle East, um, except for uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, um, who, who are going to get, ba ba what's it called, backstabbed anyway in about 10 years. So they're getting fucked as well uh, after Iran. So, so what's happening is Israel's taking the, over the entire Middle East under greater Israel. And then what they've said to the Saudis um, to get them to go along with this bullshit is you can have Europe. And they've flooded um, Europe with immigration and obviously our own countries. And they think, the Saudis literally think that they're going to own all our countries. And maybe they will. If, they, if the demographics change, say, in France enough, they possibly could own France. But I do believe there will be a rise of the far right, which will um, uh, reverse the situation completely. Well, the reason why there's been this move on the nationalist scene from Pauline Hanson, who's been the, the nationalist pinup girl for the past uh, 20 plus years, yeah. to Fraser Anning, is because Pauline Hanson, she's now said she doesn't support a Muslim immigration ban, which. Oh, you know, I mean, still, I mean, okay, I mean, but still, if she was controlling the balance of power, you know, she, I mean, she is trying to be a little bit more politically correct, and she had a Muslim woman who joined her party. No, I actually like that. I'll tell you why. It's symbolic only. It's tokenistic. And you've got to understand, tokenistic can be powerful because it convinces people, oh, well, maybe she's not anti-Islam, even though really she is, of course. You know, it doesn't matter that she might signal a little bit that she is, and she definitely is. There's no doubt about it. Uh, okay, she might signal she's got moving a little bit more centre. I think that can be a healthy thing. She might have one token Muslim woman, fine. Um, and the one she got wasn't bad. She's kind of a bit alt-right in her views and, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like why you not? Can, you know? Like, when, when you say you're against Muslim immigration, you're not, like... You're you not don't have to be against every single Muslim on the yeah, planet. Yeah, and you know? you're not saying that the Muslims who are already here have to leave. Exactly, That's the, yeah. that's the thing. It's we only want to get rid of the further. troublemakers to start with. The ones who are actively against us, the ones who are actively involved in crime. And that's when we begin that. Then we can move to stage two. We won't discuss stage two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as I mentioned, there's been this move to, to Fraser Anning. He's got... Oh, he's the best. Let's be honest. Fraser Anning is the best politician in this country. Um, he's fantastic. I really enjoyed interviewing him at the event... Um, uh, I don't know, um, a few yes, weeks the, the day he got egged. Yeah, right was that before or after the egging? Before. Oh, before. So, so I didn't actually stay around for the egging. I had to go and, you know, pick up my uh, girlfriend and uh, do a few things. And then I, you know, I think I was in touch with Morgan by phone. Like, She's been egged. Mm. Like, oh, God, here we go. Yeah, he was I'm glad it was an egg and nothing serious. Yeah, he was back in Melbourne this weekend. Yeah. Uh, was, well, he's was, a hero. Yeah. A uh, great hero. To, to announce he is, is Melbourne uh, or Victorian candidates. And that was the day that uh, Scott Morrison got egged. And of course, we remember uh, after Fraser Ang got egged, you know, the egg boy, Will Conley, he was cheered by the, the media, Sarah Hansen of Young, called him a hero. There was a GoFundMe. Uh, he got married. I believe that was a conspiracy, by the way. If you watch the footage, yes, uh, it of, is. I believe that the media were in on it, that they were told that he was going to be egged. And you, you see when he moves around the back the two cameras kind of like mm. both kind of the yes. two like mainstream news cameras so i believe if you were to look into that that egg boy uh was set up was paid five hundred dollars a thousand dollars to go and egg um fraser anning and then that became the the meme that went throughout mainstream media i believe it was completely deliberate and that the media were complicit in that uh conspiracy and also it's backfired recently on um the, La the Liberal Party, because uh, Scott Morrison, yeah, he actually proved himself egg-proof. So maybe ScoMo has a little help from God there. You know, the egg didn't land. You know what I mean? Maybe that religion of Scott Mo ScoMo is paying off. But like the egg bounced off um, ScoMo's head, yeah, and then bowled over a poor old lady, which made the um, the left winger who was trying to do it look like a complete cunt. Yeah, she went to was it, a country women's association event, and people are saying that the oh. federal police, like, there's this. I should have uh, beat the shit out of her. Uh, there, there's this like young. Uh, of weird looking girl who, who's at this event she I know. look like your typical jump on her and way. beat her up well yeah i mean what kind of what's going on what's wrong with the police can't the police just beat people up like they used to when i saw like, when she was you know what's going on what kind of well, country are you running because she's been charged now she allegedly Good. attempted to uh throw the air the egg. i noticed that there was this hand that federal police tried to try to hand. grab yeah <laughs> She, she, she tried to. She bring back public flogging for people yeah, like she, that. She Hundred lashes. To... Now that's something we could borrow from Saudi Arabia. I do criticize Saudi Arabia, but I think public whipping in, say, the public square of people who do that, a hundred lashes. I think we could bring someone over from Saudi Arabia who could do it. You know, that'd be worth reaching out. <laughs> no, I'm not in favor of uh, <laughs> corporal punishment. I think. I think oh, I'm uh, a big fan. I think we're above that. I, I no, don't, fuck I, no. I don't think there's lessons. That we people. Can take Why from not? Saudi it's good for Arabia. them. It helps them. 
definitely. Well, definitely, I think the humiliation of this exactly. girl. Really I good. mean, she tried to bolt immediately because she probably was worried that ScoMo might try and slap her like know, Fraser, Fraser did. He delivered a good one, didn't yeah. he? And that's that, fucking great. Bitch uh, slap of the century. And that's when she bowled over that uh, old lady. She didn't... That was she, terrible. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. That was horrible. A senior citizen bowled over by a, a green... I mean, you know, she... I mean, and what was great too, um, I will say something in favour of Bill Shorten. Bill Shorten condemned that bitch. On, on, on the well, public debate. He said, if she thinks she's going to find a supporter, I mean, she couldn't be fucking... I actually thought, you know what? Uh, you got to pay it, you know, pay... What's it called? When someone says something you agree with or something that's maybe uh, on your side, um, I thought, you know, that was well put, Bill Shorten. Anyway. Even the the Greens uh, leader, Richard Di Natale, because it was revealed on her Did Facebook really? she was uh, sharing all Greens uh, posts, Richard Di Natale said, no, no, she's not a like member or volunteer for us, she's just a supporter, and like mm. even he dis disavowed her. Well, obviously, because they're now attacking the major parties, because the next people to be will be them, of course, will be Richard Di Natale, and then... Um, um, Bill Shorten himself, and obviously the scary thing about egging, and I think why they didn't react strongly enough in relation to, is that someone could have um, brought a gun. I mean, you know, th you remember that Fraser Anning event, the mm. first one where I interviewed him, um, there was a threat from a Muslim um, terrorist to actually come down and shoot that event up. It was on some, like, they posted a picture of a gun, like, we're going to catch up soon kind of thing, and it was a general threat. I don't know if it was in threat to that particular event, but, you know, when you show that someone is sort of touchable, you know, that's what it means when you egg someone like that. I mean, it means you can basically shoot them in the back of the head and get away with it. Uh, was... And so, yeah, if she'd had a gun, you know, ScoMo would be dead if she was an assassin. So that's why it's extremely dangerous. Um, all this and the police should not have turned a blind eye to what happened to Fraser, even though Fraser did quickly get in a bit of instant justice with that beautiful bitch slap. Well, when Fraser got egged, uh, the police took, because I watched it live, the police took forever to get in there. And I yeah. would have thought that given like what had happened the past 24 hours, there'd be some increased security. I was watching it, it live been, and yeah. like, like, where are the, are, are the police? And like, they were saying, oh, uh, you know, Fraser and his supporters, oh, look how they held him down. Well, like, what else were they meant to do? The police took forever there. They no, didn't yeah. know what else he was going to try. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Anyway, look, I still think, um, I mean, I think that's what mainstream media wanted was that kind of, and it went everywhere. It didn't even became viral, that egg exploding. And, you know, the whole thing with Fraser ending is they don't want him to see the interview we did, basically, uh, or allow an interview like we did for the Unshackled, the one I did with Fraser, which you can see online, mm. um, under the report from, um, Tiger Mountain. Um, they don't want to see an interview like that where he just talks because I was amazed at how reasonable, intelligent, and, um, you know, like fair he was. So really, he is the ultimate unshackled candidate, um, Fraser Anning. And I think what state does he have the most chance to win a seat in? A Queensland. Oh, Queensland. Well, that's so obviously, I think if you're in Queensland, himself. vote Fraser Anning if you're a nationalist, because there he's got the strongest chance. So you've got to really, you know, throw all the ammunition up there and then, you know, everywhere else, uh, I guess, make a decision. What is the local nationalist um, party within the state that can uh, get the most um, Senate seats? You know, which some cases could be One Nation, and some cases will could be Clive Palmer. Let's let's talk about Clive Palmer now. He, I know I'm actually pro Clive Palmer. Yeah. I like Clive Palmer, but I know you hate him, so yeah, I'll let you go first. Well, because I've seen the movie before uh, yeah. when he first got elected in in 2013. Now he sold himself as a uh, conservative, uh, but he did a preference deal with the Greens. Uh -huh. That's how <coughs> Glenn Lazarus won in Queensland, and that's why Sarah <coughs> now got re-elected against the odds really? in 2013. Uh, so good. he gave us another uh, term of Sarah Hansen Young. That's not and good. He and his Senate team they pretty much blocked all the the measures in uh tony abbott and joe hockey's uh, 2014 budget uh repair and he even uh delayed the repeal of the mining and carbon tax even though that was his his central uh, really? campaign promise and then of course jackie lambie uh left the, the party that... and so did glenn lazarus and they pretty much uh, voted with labor and the greens all the time mm -hmm. i mean jackie lambie so there are some problems there with Clive. endless welfare and and taxes mm -hmm. and probably the people he's got this time around i mean they're they're all people who like they they failed to get pre-selected in the major parties, so they're they're with Clive and the. the what did you say about him? You said he was was an opportunist. Was that what you're saying? Or? Well, he's well, he's obviously in it for him for himself, but he also mm -hmm. loves the the limelight as well. You know, he yeah, loves yeah. being the the central focus. Well, he reminds but, me of Trump. Basically, but that's why I like seen, him. He like, he doesn't like the the scrutiny. Like he's walked off interviews when he's got questions that he doesn't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well that's fair enough. I mean, look, I, I do like him. Um, I say I would like him 
because he's you know basically basically because he's copying the, the style and antics of Donald Trump, and that I think that at some level that is that is useful. That he's at least preaching a kind of economic nationalism. He's you know he's the ads have attacked that fucking Chinese base up. Well, how the, are you going to uh, make Australia great when you've got your core floats made in China? Look, that's you know I mean Donald Trump's hats, the MAGA hats, were originally made in China to begin with in the campaign, and people often made that joke. But look, it doesn't matter. You know. Like, like, I don't know how to put it. Like, the symbol is stronger than the reality. You but know what I mean? Like, the symbology... Now, just let me speak. The symbology of Clyde Palmer is good. And that that is stronger than the fact that he might have his fucking ballards made in... Who gives a fuck where he gets them made? He, obviously, he gets them made cheaper in China. But, Al, but, 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 when he, if he did, were to get some power or some uh, seats in the Senate, we should say to him in the back channels, listen, okay, get your shit printed locally. And he probably would, you know? It was the same with Marga hats. They're originally made in China, but... It, obviously, he did realise that was hypocritical of Trump, and now they're being made in America. You know, I mean, you know, you got to remember capitalists who come into politics; they are going to have hypo hypocritical practices. Obviously, Trump did, and I think obviously Clive Palmer would. But the more they realise the power of their own rhetoric, in the sense, the power of economic nationalism, which I think is what is behind the basic ideas of Clive Palmer. Now, I would agree he's not perfect, and I would agree you're quite right about some of the things. But a lot, of, I think, some Australians. The, this, the ads he's been taking, and they're everywhere. He's spending a fucking fortune on them, obviously. They are having an effect, and he's actually going to get some votes. He's going to get some Senate seats out of all that, and I think that's fair enough, um, but we should encourage him to be more of an authentic nationalist and less of a, um, what's the word you used, um, opportunist hypocrite. Well, if he does return to Parliament, who sure. knows what Clive Palmer are going to get? Like, will he go green again? I mean, he stood at a wow. press conference with Al Gore, and even though he uh, eventually uh, did repeal the carbon tax, he still kept the Clean Energy Finance uh, Corporation and the the, the Climate uh, Commission. Yeah. Uh, so he he's and the Renewable Energy. But I didn't target. know that. No one knows that fucking bullshit. You know. No oh, well, one. I remember. I remember what, what he did yeah, the first. That's time. not the public. That's not what's in the public. Well, yeah, it's but it's just what's on his ads. Now, sure, moment. okay, he's a hypocrite, you know what I mean? I mean, he's a politician who's a hypocrite. Believe me, that's not unique. They're all fucking hypocrites. They're all... They're, I, mean, they're, I mean, politicians are assholes. So you hate him? No, and I like him. So that's fair enough, we can disagree. But we'll do so friendly. Mm -hmm. But there's so many better other options as well. We've mentioned Pauline Hanson, Fraser yeah, Anning. Sure, I agree. There's the, the... I would agree with you that they are the two ones to go for, but if there's a third, third nationalist, why not Clyde? Well, I just interviewed Rod Cullerton from the Great Australian Party. That's oh, another yeah, option. Tell me about them. I don't know about them. Well, they're, they're about the, the Constitution. That's their central focus. I mean, they're associated with the, Can the, I know, your, the, Constitution here? the know Your Rights uh, oh, yeah, Facebook, they're good. Yeah, Facebook yeah, yeah. group. That, that's their, their central focus. And mm -hmm. then we've also got like Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. They're big in yeah, guns, New, guns. New South Wales. Well, guns, definitely. We need, we need guns to the, defeat the globalists. The, the leftist, progressive New South Wales National Party. Guns, guns, Even, guns. I'd say that Australian <laughs> Conservatives is a better choice than, than Clive Palmer, even though Corey is, you know, being plain vanilla conservative. Corey. Oh, that's right. Corey Bernardi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. I don't think they're going to go too well just because they're, they're playing it too safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a whole gamut. There's a whole gamut of right-wing parties and options. So look, I would say then probably, um, it's probably best in the House to, sh to vote Liberal to stop Bill Shorten, because it's clear that, you know, uh, Bill Shorten's agenda is the most radical Labor agenda I think I've ever heard in my life. Well, and it's crazy. Well, he was a former trade union official, and he seems to be taking a lot of cues from Sally McManus. I mean, her change the rules campaign, which everyone's been pointing out, it's changed the rules that the Red Gillard government introduced. Yeah, exactly. They wanted to make them even more radical than what they did. How was that event where he had like Gilly Gillard and Rudd and, and oh, all yeah. the people he'd stabbed in the back and then Paul, Paul Keating comes along and starts, you know, like going on about his love for China and self-masturbating and then Bill Shorten had to come along and go, oh, I don't agree with Paul Keating, so already division was shown. That was a very funny event. Bill Shorten, he sort of just dismissed that. Oh, well, that's just, you know, how Paul Keating is. I like, yeah, yeah. was prime minister a long time ago, which sort of like is like an acceptable, <laughs> well, you know, Paul Keating, like he's always been a, a grump. Now he's an old grump. Yeah, so exactly. He's, he's bound to sort of say the, the I things. did like Paul, I mean, if we talk about Labour, I actually liked Bob Hawke when he was in the 80s. I mean, I probably don't like everything he did, but I, I was a teenager, so I wasn't that politically engaged. But I actually, when I was running the Hellfire Club up in Sydney, I shared a cab with Bob Hawke. This is a great story. Um, we were, I think, on one of the main streets, and I got the cab first. And I realized it was, uh, Bob Hawke was, you know, like, flagging a cab next to me. And then the cab driver and I both went, fuck, that's Bob Hawke. 
And he said, we've got to pick him up. So, and I says, I'll go to wherever Bob Hawke is going. And then um, from there, well, you know, so basically Bob Hawke jumped in and we just had a good chat for about 20 minutes and we drove to the other side of Sydney. And then I got a cab back, but he was actually a really nice guy. And uh, obviously the cabbie and I were all just, you know, chatting him up kind of thing, just, you know, talking about him and saying what a legend he was. Well, Hawke and Keating, they were the longest serving Labor yeah. government for 13 years. So they certainly did a lot of things. Yeah. Right. And yeah, they did. The voters yeah. rewarded them. So it was even, a good period the 80s in Australia. E even, even a lot of uh, conservatives say that they were a good uh, Team, government. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, even Keating was not the end of the world. Yeah. And he's become more radical. Like he was almost sli a slightly more conservative um, Labour person when he was in power. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. And that, that's praising of the fucking Labour Party. We're not getting carried away. Yeah. <laughs> Now, something that we're always constantly talking about is social media censorship. Obviously, Facebook Terrible. is the worst offender. You just got a 30-day Facebook ban. I did. I did. I did. I have, I have two accounts. So um, what I normally do is uh, I kind of jump across to the other one, which is Richard D. Wollstonecroft. And then uh, while I enjoy... Um, being sent to my room for 30 days on the first one and it's terrible. I mean this one it was some kind of like It wasn't even like right wing. It was kind of a, a jokey thing about Hitler and Stalin That was not serious in any way. It was so obviously a joke and it was like 30 days. It's like, okay, great You know, I mean, but there's a lot more serious um, censorship going on Where you know people are being um, completely deplatformed like well I mean even though I still see Alex Jones videos on yeah. Facebook you can still share them and I don't know how long they are so, uh, so let's run through all the people that have been banned from Let's Facebook. do that. You go so, ahead. Alex Jones, the Proud Boys, Gavin McGuinness, Blair Cottrell, Neil Erickson, uh, the Lad Society, uh, Avi Yemeni, and Tommy Robinson. And recently we've had uh, Miley Leonopoulos, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, and Laura Luma. Now, post the Christchurch massacre, Facebook said they were going to be banning white nationalism and separatism. The three most recent ones that I just mentioned, none of them were were white nationalists it's mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. well all of them they're attacking the conservatives right. yeah i mean you know it's and it as someone said um you know just because they might attack alex jones or um don't think they're not coming for all conservatives i think this is really shocking um but uh it, i think the globalists are overplaying their hand um, I, in my opinion, as I'm a radical, I believe we need to nationalize something like Facebook. Essentially, it's a utility. <laughs> nah. No, oh, no, absolutely. Uh, nationalize the fucking thing. You know, I mean, Trump should just say, ah, Mark Zuckerberg, come over here. Here we go. Um, thank you for Facebook. Here's a, get it like a fuck off check of like $50 billion. I don't know whatever it's worth, whatever his share of it's worth. Bye. And then say, oh, you got a problem? Here you go, talk to the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the next room. That's what we need to do. Militarize everything. Fuck it. You well, know? I definitely take the, the libertarian approach. Everyone's just like, oh, well, we'll create your own Facebook. And we yeah. have. Like, there's Minds.com, there's Gab, uh, help there's too. MeWe, there's Telegram, which a lot of people are, are popping on. Like, uh, when people say, go create your own Facebook, like, what they're, what they're sort of saying is like, ha, huh, like, you won't be able to get anywhere without Facebook. But look what yeah, yeah. the internet has created. Minds, I hear, is very good. What's that like? I uh, gotta check that out. We, we don't get much traction on mines i find that's not not good not good i've definitely gab is where most of our but everyone there is. is like everyone there's all right it's, you know what i mean like i went there and it was like it was like too much of a what's it called uh echo chamber you know i like having left-wing people who i can convert and they all do you well, know they, they, they are people. going over there just to, to troll people like blair cottrell like, yeah, yeah. So, so they are mi uh, migrating over there just to uh, i think facebook is the most subversive political weapon we have because even though you know there's a lot of people who spread bullshit but it's it's, it's all this alt-right new right stuff you know and it, it converts people um you know i mean even like this new book by Brett now it's called white um it's just like converting liberals to our cause like by the fucking like the amphitheater load you know like jordan peterson or somebody it, it it all brings people to our side of things to at least seriously considering our side of things in a more realistic manner which i think is hugely powerful well that's why the left are always loving facebook to to ban uh, people who are who are nationalists like, yeah, I, no, ju no. I just saw a, an article but like, that's there, why there we're was, the real threat there was some academics it's actually a compliment saying, by the way we should acknowledge it the fact they do want to ban us that they don't want to ban i don't know islamic radicals or whatever it's because we are the real threat you know we are the real danger mm. you know and like um breaking bad we are we knock you know what i mean 
Well, Fraser Anning, he's protected at that moment because he's a sitting senator, but there's a lot of uh, leftists agitating for, for his page, which has... We are the danger. That's, that's quite clear. To, ...to be taken down. I mean, hmm. the the left... Well, they uh, they they don't like the, the power that's in... Uh, so nationalism. Yeah. The nationalism is a hugely powerful idea. I mean, we've only began to tap into the power of nationalism and a small percent, all the movements that we're talking about. They've only begun. Like, it's like a huge, it's like a huge resource of mine. Like, once you truly awake nationalism in the heart of a people, it's a tremendous power. Tremendous. Well, it's like, even Trump has only tapped like a, like a like 10 or 20% of true nationalism. Once you really hit the nationalist gold mine, so to speak, democracy becomes unimportant it's like you have 90 percent of the vote and it's just like a giant flood then you know and it's just like not it's unstoppable or well, hate speech well it's speech the the left doesn't like and mm. that's too influential that's what yeah that's, that's what they've the... been standing and it, it, it is shocking and um it, it is a testament to our true power in the sense that obviously we are what's worrying them i don't know i mean obviously when i say nationalize them that's not actually going to happen but i like to say it because it's not a threat you know what I mean? Because they're, they're, they're hysteric. They do think we'll nationalise Facebook. But, like, um, I don't know. There must be a way um, Trump can, you know, because I think there's this issue in relation to them being a publisher. You know what I mean? Uh, or the, a private forum. There's some kind of um, law that Trump can invoke that would mean they basically have to make it a free forum. Otherwise, they're responsible for all the kind of content. Have you heard this argument before? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think that's what Trump needs to do. And that's a definite something he can do in relation to law and order. And well, that's stuff. not the approach that Australia's political leaders are taking, like, which is what is yeah, Scott Morrison? He announced his policy to take on, or well, five years jail for Facebook trolls, and then he's had a meeting with Facebook post what does that mean? Church, cracking I down mean... on hate content and well, Labor, of course. Are, are what does say... five years jail for Facebook trolls? I mean, do, there, there are there are like a thousand of them on my page already. Like, well, it's. I mean, the, the are they all going to jail for five years? I don't think so. Uh, the people who trolled uh, sports journalist Aaron Mullen because they, they said things like, I hope your baby's born stillborn, which is wow. horrible, but... Of course, like, uh, if people say... I like, don't like nasty, that kind of thing, too. I yeah, mean, but, but, like, people say these nasty things. I've like, never done that I shit. I hope you die. I hope you kill yourself yeah, no, on well, Facebook all the time. I don't it's think you deserve horror. five years jail. I agree. It's horrible. And, I mean, I'm not a fan of, uh, I mean, uh, many of these radical feminists like Clem Ford and Catherine Devaney. Um, but uh, a friend of mine is actually dating Catherine Devaney, the poor soul. And mm -hmm. um, he, you know, she was attacked by nationalists when she said those things about Anzex. And I was in a few groups. And I was going, listen, mate, you know... I said to your girlfriend, she should be careful because there's some very, very angry people right now, you know, who are like almost maybe going to come knocking on your door. And then they did actually knock on the door that later that evening and she'd been with the police there. So I did give him a warning and um, he said, yeah, look, I think she's going too far, blah, 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 and getting a bit carried away. I just like the things that Catherine Devaney says, I just say she's just after attention. Do not take the bait. See, I actually knew her when I was a teenager. Like, and um, we were part of like, you know, we're the same age and uh, we sort of hung out. We're kind of in, we're kind of goths and stuff like that. And, um, um, you know, she was always kind of nice about my policy. She used to invite me to dinner parties. Hmm. And because she knew, I mean, she always said about Richard is, you know, Richard might be a fascist, but he's our fascist. You know, that was her joke. And in the sense that she could talk to me about politics. And, you know, I remember one of the last dinner parties I got invited, to, uh, we spoke about mass immigration. And I said, okay, because she's obviously into open borders. And I said, well, okay, what if we were to move 20 million uh, Indonesians into this country and you had to wear the burqa? Because you're a feminist. You know, I mean, you wouldn't like that, would you? And she said, well, no, I guess I wouldn't. And I said, well, okay, there you go. So even for you, there is a limit, right? Because if we move 20 million Indonesians in here, you would have to wear the burqa and, I don't know, shut up because you're a woman, right? You know, that's the law. I'm shorting Islam. You I mean, shut up. And she agreed with me on that. And then she, that began to annoy her. Like that she did realize to some extent there was some kind of limit to her own multicultural tolerance within herself. And then um, that annoyed her and I got, that was my last invitation. And, you know, we've always stirred each other a bit on social media. I don't really hate her, but sometimes she says things and I just go, oh, you know. But she's, you're right, she's being a troll and yeah. she does that to get, you know, and she she's is, irrelevant really. Yeah. And that's the only way she gets pressed. So. She is a test for conservatives to make sure that they don't become snowflakes. Like, don't, you know, get all outraged and, I you agree. know, rah, 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 rah over what she said. Very good point. Very good she's point. She's just wanting to, she that, that's that. her goal. She's she's wanting to bait and, yeah. and outrage. And, mm -hmm. you know, what But you I don't do... think you should threaten people like that. I don't think anyone who's like sending threatening or, or things like, you know, I hope you, something, I hope you get cancer or, I mean, that's horrible. That's horrible. Don't do that to people i mean obviously me saying that will not stop people doing it but it might you know i don't that's not a constructive way you know 
I don't agree with people getting five years jail for it, but like I, I just, you know, most people, say something constructive, yeah. you know, or most not. Most people would treat, like, Catherine Devaney, like, with the appropriate response, like, oh, she's just after attention, because she's been, like, sacked from, like, right. heaps, of, heaps of things. I saw recently she did, she posted a, a nude on, on Facebook. Stop, just, please! Okay. We were, it's like, we've done enough, that she's punishing us enough without posting a nude photo of herself. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, look, she's not that bad in person, and uh, as I said, my, my politics used to uh, kind of amuse her, because it seemed so far from ever becoming a reality, but I noticed as my politics began to um, become more and more powerful, as this new nationalism began to rise, it became less and less funny with her. You know what I mean? Because there was a time 20 years ago, it seemed like my style of politics would never make a serious kind of comeback. And now it's a completely different situation. As I believe that right now in uh, 2019, the far right is in a, a much better position than it was 100 years ago in 1919. And look what happened. <laughs> Now, we haven't talked about on the show much the, the Mueller report, ah. uh, which, well, uh, long behold, said there was uh, no collusion by Trump with the Russians and no obstruction of Mueller. justice, but... Uh, this is a coup attempt. Let's just get that straight. But he did manage to gotcha two of Trump's operatives. Uh, his uh, former personal attorney, uh, Richard Cohen, is going to jail, oh. and so is his former campaign manager, uh, Paul Manafort. So, Manafort. Which was basically, this was the strategy of the, the Mueller investigation, to entrap associates of Trump exactly. to get them to turn on him. Exactly. And apparently they would have the smoking gun that would bring oh, Trump no. down. Which it's just a cool it, didn't, it didn't work. I mean... Mm -hmm. With, I mean, that's what's been going on. Without the, the Mueller investigation, those two people would not be going to jail. No, I mean, the Democrats have been in such a state since Trump won that they've actually attempted two essentially, well, they're not military coups, but they've, they're attempt, basically soft coup attempts. The first one was Rosenstein. It's always these people, you'll, know, you'll notice. Mm. And you know what I mean by that. Mm. Um, it's always these people. Uh, Rosenstein, um, a charming individual, who uh, decided to, uh, I don't know what, he was within the FBI, I think, right? And he wanted to basically wear a wire into the white into the uh, mm. oval office which is completely illegal yeah, and basically yeah. entrap um trump in a conversation um and also to invoke article 25 which is the one about um mm. mental health um you know i mean trump may be a bit of a wild card but he's not mentally ill you don't achieve that level of success by being mentally ill um so it's, it's an absolute nonsense and obviously that that was basically treason i mean basically rosenstein should be hanging from a fucking um I don't know, the nearest gallows, if we still had strict treason laws. I mean, it's absolute treason. Why he's not fucking in Guantanamo Bay right now, getting getting a bucket of water poured over his it's fucking a, It's head. not treason if the deep state do it. Yeah, exactly. There it is. There it is. And then there's coup number two, which is the more serious one, which is the Mueller. Uh, and and you, know, you notice that they haven't let it go? Like, even though the Mueller report has come back, and even Mueller has said, oh, well, sorry, there's not much there. I mean, and then they now want to see the redacted version. It was fucking nothing. Yeah, it's 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 currently good. the redactions are covering up Clinton stuff too. That if they were to get the unredacted one, it's just full of Clinton's crimes, which they're sort of keeping secret at the moment until they want to try and attempt to indict. They're probably going to attempt to indict some people around Clinton first, and then maybe go for you know the evil witch herself. Well, I know that the the Democrats leadership they're sort of moving on and going after his tax returns again. Yeah, they are. Uh, so so they've gone back that, to that issue started up again. Who cares? As, as someone said, it was like a Dr. Spock meme. It said, you know, a billionaire who becomes a politician, they want to investigate his um, tax records. But what about a, a politician who becomes a millionaire? Shouldn't we be examining, like, Pelosi? What? He's got, like, a personal fortune of, like, 30, 40 million or even more than that. How the fuck did she get all that money without bribing? Well, they're, they're unsure, the, the sensible Democrats, who, long behold, are people like Pelosi and Schumer. They're, yeah. they're unsure whether we should impeach Trump because... Well, they, they, well, they to... want to do it. Obviously, some want to do it. I mean, you know, here's the list of people. Nadler, another one. Schumer. Feinstein. There's just, just all these cunts. You know, and they all come... What, do, what? Americans, what's going on? Why are these people even in power? I mean, what in what planet are they helping Americans? Because they aren't, okay? They are out to destroy you. That is their agenda. And that's what they're doing. And, and in fact, they're revealing themselves under Trump. That's why I like Trump from a kind of... A semiotic perspective, kind of signalling, because this is—I mean, like left-wing people notice this. They go, "It's always fucking Nadler," and you know, because I hate Israel to begin with, left wingers so they're, they're very easily brought over to this line of thinking. Well, 2020, uh, the presidential race has begun, and like all yeah. the, the, the already... candidates, they're running just to to take on Trump. So that's the thing. They're they're obviously all the candidates. They want the boogeyman 
uh, Trump to, to run again. Mm -hmm. and, and I made the point on a previous show that's funny that uh, Biden, the, the old white guy, is yep. leading in the polls and coming second in the polls is another old white guy, Bernie oh, Sanders. This pretty fly for a white guy. <laughs> Because I know that's the they're, the, they're the that's the party of like the new yeah the inter intersectional it, one yeah and they're, they're both two old white guys mm. you know I mean you've got all the they're, they're all polling single digits all of the the intersectional uh, what's it called Buck Plug he's one of his candidates Buck Plug and uh, what's his name Buck Gig Buck, Buck yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He was on the Buck cover Plug, of okay. Time with his husband oh yeah fuck off mm. and I mean they're trying to push that that wheelbarrow uh, they don't uh, go uh, last Beto O'Rourke the Latina. Oh, Beto, he's the one who uh, fantasized about killing um, young people or something, kill mm. murdering people. He sounds basically like Patrick Bateman as a candidate who's a Democrat, so that's going to be wonderful. Mm. We've got Camilla Harris, who's the, well, she's African American and a woman. No one's ever heard of her, including me. So. But uh, she she was a prosecutor, so she's Prostitute. sort of uh, running. <laughs> pros In a former life. AOC, I like. Isn't she a great troll? You know what I mean? AOC. Like, she's kind of fun. She, I think, well, first of all, she's sexy. You've got to admit that. Well, you yeah, gotta admit there, it. There's that. For, if you've got a fucking a, communist, she's the one. There's that video of her uh, dance, dancing with her, in, yeah, in her uni days. I mean, yeah, but I know it's sort of like, I, I don't want to get too crass, but I think mm. the fact that she is so stupid, she is like a, yeah. a parody of a progressive. Exactly. And this is she's why. Like, yeah, self, yeah, self parody. This is why parody. I think the Alexandria Ocasio Cortez press release parody account got yeah. banned from Twitter. Why did they get banned? Because people kept confusing it for the real one, which <laughs> I don't blame because it was it was plausible that this is stuff that she'd said. I mean, the real AOC says stuff like, um, it's not, uh, you, you don't need to be factually correct, just morally right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you say stuff like that. Yeah, no, she's hilarious. Yeah. Like, she's self-parodying. And there's the other one, there's, there's some kind of send-up of um, you know, creepy Uncle Joe. You know, I mean, these videos, oh, yeah. I mean, the media has revealed that he is touching people yeah, inappropriately. There's a, there's a but this website. one, what's the one by uh, Paul Joseph Watson? I think that's still on YouTube. Hmm. I mean, he's, he's touching children, like, and yeah. not just like once, like a hundred times, completely inappropriately. And yeah. it's not like, it, it's like, it's obvious there's something weird going on with that guy. Go to JoeBiden.info. There you that, go. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's hilarious. That's a good uh, parody website. So. I do hope it's, it's it's Biden versus Trump, because Trump will have a field day. Hmm. He's, he's, you know, Hillary Clinton. Well, well, Trump's sort of been He's been quite sympathetic to like Joe, like in the end, like he released that video of like Joe touching Joe, but <laughs> That's like right. he's sort of like he has Retro. a lot of empathy for Joe Bones. Like I know what it's like to be accused of like it's sexual true. harassment. Like, also, think that um, Trump is smart enough to um, bolster up the candidate he can most easily defeat, which I think is probably Biden. Though Biden technically, I mean Biden technically could win. Um, well, you he, know, his dream is Elizabeth Warren, uh, Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Yeah. Well, that would be the dream, wouldn't well, it? Well, she's just <laughs> woeful as a campaigner. It's terrible. I mean, when she announced her run for president, it's like I'm. Yeah, it wasn't like I'm running for president. I'm running for president. It was really. I love that that video of, of Trump talking about Elizabeth Warren, where someone in the media says, "Oh, do you know?" When you call Elizabeth Trump Pocahontas, that's offensive to people. And he said, yes, Pocahontas. And I remember thinking that was like a great moment in media where it says, yes, I know it's offensive and I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's the whole point. Like, you just say it again, you know? Fuck. So what? Yeah, it's offensive to somebody. I mean, everything's offensive to somebody. As Jordan Peterson is very cleverly pointed out when he was in the argument with that, uh, you know, Channel 4 woman. He said, you know, what you're saying to me is, fuck, makes me feel uncomfortable. I mean, imagine if you couldn't say that. I mean, everyone feels uncomfortable. We've made that, um, you know, over that Israel Falou uh, comment. Yes. Um, I had a uh, Steve Lemarquand, Lem uh, Steve Lemarquand, uh, Lemarquand, that's how you pronounce it. Steve Lemarquand, that's his name. He's an actor. He's on my page and he's a radical leftist. And he had a real problem with this comment. And I said, mate, you know, I mean, what do you think? How do you think I feel every day waking up in PC world and social justice world? I'm offended by everything. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if, people, if things are going to get banned because they offend me, everyone's in a lot of trouble because there's going to be so much banning going on. It's ridiculous. Once you begin to ban things based on offense, I mean, I said, can you imagine if the right wing started acting like the left now? And we had the power to do that. Trust me, you wouldn't better say fucking anything. Because we were offended by everything the left says. You know what I mean? So as soon as you do that, it's a nightmare world. They don't realize that they, this, this new left, they've opened the door themselves to fascism. They've kicked it open. And then, you know, when other people begin to rush through that door, well, you know, who opened it? You know what I mean? Well, there's still some on the left who, who realize this. They have, yeah. 
<laughs> they okay. realize they've opened the fucking door and they're thinking let's maybe close it before anyone else goes through the fucking but door. i know i know when the the proud boys got banned from That's paypal terrible. they they banned terrible. antifa as well and... i'm a huge gavin mckinnis fan by the way i love gavin mckinnis they... i love all these alt right new right figures i love everybody and i don't care when they contradict each other i don't care at all but... because it's all such a glorious show but the left like couldn't uh understand why antifa got banned from paypal as well it just did not, it did not compute Antifa. Did they get banned? Banned from PayPal, yes. Oh, they did get banned from PayPal. Well, that's good. And Antifa are a bunch of cunts. But, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, usually Antifa don't get uh, lumped in with all this. Usually they're not the ones being banned. So if someone has decided to go ahead and do that, well, I mean, look, I, personally, I, I wouldn't ban anybody. Um, even Antifa. Well, yeah, I'm personally for a free-for-all, exactly. like, online. And in relation to funding and everything. Fuck, I know as long as you're not. Mm. Or if they, if they actually, if there was a common sense, like, policy on facebook like then like beheading videos yeah, yeah. And things that openly promote violence pornography yes of course and things that openly promote i mean if there's a muslim group calling for um for murder and if there was a right-wing group that was actually calling for something like new zealand i would agree that 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 should be banned because open instigations to violence absolutely well, i would actually agree with that because i think that's that is dangerous and um uh, and that whether it comes from the left or right is inappropriate but that's where i guess i would draw the line anything after that that's not an open call, but has various kinds of problems. I would allow freedom of speech because I think it's reasonable and it's open discussion. Well, even Gad banned uh, Christopher Cantwell for uh, saying that uh, gunning down leftists should be a political tactic. No, you know, that's 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 yes, you know. And you see some right wingers uh, say it in on Twitter or you know, it's it's more like a troll. They often mean it, but um, I think that's inappropriate. And I mean, I've never said anything like that. And um, you know, I think you should. It's just stupid. I think if you're a serious political commentator. Well, just, Anyway, let's go to the UK now. Where ah, Brexit. Brexit. Yeah, well, it's been the betrayal. officially delayed. The globalists would not allow it. I mean, you know, this is like, I mean, we had the same sex marriage vote here. Now, I voted no. Um, but if, if, if yes had not been enacted, I would be fucking pissed off because people did say, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, fair that's enough. That, that's why. Now, if no won, I would expect that to have been, and if yes won, you know, and yes did win. And it was implemented within six weeks. Mm. What the fuck is going on in the UK? I've never in my life seen a British uh, election ignored. I'm well, shocked beyond, like, beyond belief. Well, because Brexit's been delayed, they get to vote in another European election, which is happening that is good, actually. Later, it's kind of later this month. That's worked and... out well for us. We're gonna, we can get to install a bunch of nationalists. Yeah. Apparently, um, the Brexit Party's doing very, very well there. Yes, uh, the, the Brexit Party was uh, born out of... Uh, uh, a split in in UKIP because UKIP after Nigel Farage well took a back seat after the referendum which was it was a mistake if he is to think that his work was done when Brexit mm -hmm. won the vote and so there was there was a power vacuum in in UKIP and they had about went through a leader every six months and they didn't really get uh, traction again until their their current leader uh, Jared Batten and he decided to to take uh, UKIP in a Nash more more pure nationalist uh, direction, mm. uh, like opposition to Islamization and brought in Tommy Robinson. Oh, yeah, and, and that upset um, uh, the Brexit guy, because yeah. he was going more centrist. I, yeah. think, I think both positions are, 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 what's the word, are valid in the sense that, like, I understand what, what um, Nigel Farage is doing, because he's basically bringing the same message, but he's mainstreaming it. Yeah, and that, whereas the UKIP in the direction they've gone is stronger, definitely, but is more marginalized and i think that is a real problem and personally i prefer the way nigel farage is doing because i know that he's less radical at least on the surface but in reality he is the same and i think we need to realize that in politics well he comes from a a conservative libertarian classical liberal yeah, yeah. background well, and so something too libertarian, he but... like what did he what did he call uh you kid now it's become a street thug party oh, something like right. that something, that's a good some, criticism. something like that i don't think so but at all i love Tom the, the the brexit party what's well, been able to launch very rapidly and farage with all of his uh connections that he's made over the years has been able to bring in a lot of money mm -hmm. and so there there's been a lot of they raised a lot of money material. recently for brexit and uh ukip uh, did not do well in the the uh, local council Election. elections, which, well, none of the major parties did. The Tories didn't do well. Labour didn't do well. What the, the Remainers, the, the Liberal Democrats uh, in the UK, they did very well, which, um, yeah, which should... Yeah, but that's local elections. I mean, yeah, but it's, st it's still seen as an indicator of no, it's how the... No, people can vote that way for something where it doesn't... I mean, you know, voting mm. Remain in the, what, the local council doesn't mean mm. shit. So, you know, 
sometimes people will go back to voting for, for like what's the word pussy parties you know what i mean in an election where it's not important you know or like a local like local council or something like oh they can pretend to be a good left winger whereas in an important election like this european one or um a brexit vote or um or the next um, british federal election they will vote conservative well there's a new remain party the uh was it the 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 cent What's it called? The Centre UK Party or oh. Cuck Party? Cuck. Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. You can't make that up. You know? Yeah. This is kind of... It's like this is a cosmic joke going on I sometimes. I mean, like, it wasn't you there... You would call the, it the Cuck Party. Wouldn't there be some meeting, like, where they thought, hey, maybe we shouldn't, like, choose this name? So <laughs> Too that's, funny. So, so that's made up of ex-Labour Party MPs who quit because they considered Jeremy Corbyn too socialist and too anti-Semitic. Uh, oh, oh, I like Jeremy Corbyn. I'm going to say it right it's, here. It's a, it's a, it's a globalist. Like, I, tell you this, I like Bernie Sanders. If if I was not to pick Trump, I would pick Bernie Sanders. And if I was not to pick, say, if, if I could have a choice for who could read England, I would say um, Nigel Farage would be my number one choice. Then after him, or well, maybe probably the Tory, like a good Tory, like um, a pro Brexit Tory, which, which you've got to get rid of May. She's an absolute disaster. Yeah. He's a car wreck. But what's the name? Reese Mogg. I like him. Yeah. He's like a very old school yeah, he's sort conservative. Yeah, he's same as Farage. And he's so way. white. Like, he's so, like, he yeah. just gives off this white kind of mm. old English. Oh, I love that. Like, yeah. the signaling of that alone. He doesn't right? like uh, Tommy either. Uh, oh, is, well, so what? I mean, Tommy is running as an independent. I mean, that's, that's you got to remember, too. People say they don't like Tommy Rod. Doesn't mean they don't. Let's get that. I mean, people wear masks in a civilization. And, you know, like, for example, Tony, I mean, even like when ScoMo came out and said he didn't like Fraser Anning, do you really think he doesn't like Fraser Anning? Of course he fucking likes him. But, like, they have to just say in our political climate that they don't because they have to wear a certain kind of mask at the moment. They have to pretend they respect this bullshit. They don't. But Tommy Robinson, he's not even that extreme. I mean, hmm. compared to the, oh. the the nationalists we have here, I mean, Tommy's a civic nationalist. He's a postmodern nationalist. Yeah. He's for like, a modern progressive society. Many left-wingers, really... I'll tell you this about Tommy Robinson, many left-wingers, I've introduced Tommy Robinson to them, and they've begun to share like pro Tommy videos. Yeah. And of course all their left wing friends absolutely begin to have aneurysms and have heart attacks and go, what are you doing? This guy's like a, but they don't No, no, no. This guy's on the point, particularly in relation to sexual violence against women. In, yeah. And there's a couple of actresses. I won't know who they are. They've shared a lot of art and they've gotten a lot of trouble for it, but they're like, no, they don't. this guy is solid on this. And it's shocking what has been going on to women. And he also in, has um, a, in England. a large gay following in the UK as well. Tommy, like, Tommy he, he has is solid as a rock. Like what you'd consider progressive. Yeah, type fans. supporting him. I know, it's great. So that's why I think it's so... That breaks down the barriers, mate. That's why mm. That's why I think it's so bizarre that he's you considered this far-right extreme... He's not. Yeah. I think Nigel Farage is, uh, is wrong there. I mean, you can see where he's coming from, because uh, he used to lead the EDL. But yeah. I would say in relation to Tommy Robinson that he was probably more radical to begin with. Like, he's maybe in a more... I mean, even Blair Cottrell, for example, locally. Like, when he first appeared on the scene, he was more radical, but now you can see Blair's opinions are becoming more... I definitely um, say that... Populist, Blair, more centre. Yeah. Blair, Blair is definitely a lot more explicitly white uh, white nationalist... Oh, sure. ...than, than Tommy. Than Tommy, because yeah, Tommy, but, like, he makes all these alliances with... I think C Blair and, Cottrell has the power to become, like, a Tommy Robinson, to become almost like an Australian national hero. Yeah. In a sense, but if he were to do that, he would, probably would have to... Um, behave in a slightly more nationalist populist manner because he's quite radical in some of his beliefs but I still think if you begin in a radical position there's no reason you can't lighten up a little bit and you would do that to essentially move more centre because I think this is where in the centre is where we do take over power this is when we win elections you know what I mean if you over marginalise um, the new right in some aspects of the far right um, you know I don't know if you know right now, but the far right is basically the new fucking centre. You know what I mean? But we have to allow it to, and we have to soften our beliefs a little uh, until we take over. And once we take over, well, then we can do whatever the fuck we like. Well, it shows how cucked the, the UK is cuck, currently, yeah, the because g <laughs> given the that to? Tommy Robinson is cucking? considered an extremist, like yeah. he's considered the most extreme, and like given we've oh, just gone through, like Tommy you know, well, solid as a rock. His, his actual views that, that just shows. Like many foreigners love Tommy. I mean, you know, I know people who are like Asian and different nations. They love him. Mm. They love him. It's like he just and he comes across as a real Englishman. Um, you know, like Morrissey loves him. I mean, all these kind of different mm. figures who are, you know, there are a lot of people that like Tommy. Go ahead. I mean, Britain first. They're another extremist group. Like they're. <sighs> Well, Nick Griffin got banned recently. Well, his British National Party, that is a white nationalist party. He was on my Facebook page. He was really solid, you mm. know, and, and we actually shared a few articles um, 
that I'd written, and he but was a really cause... nice guy, like very nice guy. And I, I'd seen media interviews with Nick Griffin, and it was like well, this, yeah. they're taking this guy wrong. Like he said, he was like a Fraser Anning. He was like a solid yeah, in the rock. But they're sort of like like I just described because they're like the UK consensus is that mm. you know it is a multicultural like postmodern society. Oh. There's not. Like there's room for Tommy. Look, and, it is and multicultural, first, right? We like, have to accept of... that it is multicultural, but it's not working. Okay. No, no. So what happens not, now? I'm for the last fifty that. years, for the last fifty years, it's moved in this direction. Now, but right now, and historically, we need to say it's not working. But it doesn't mean that the next day it's not going to be multicultural still. No, we just admit multiculturalism now doesn't work. And what we need to do is begin a fifty-year process of reversing it. Okay. Now, to begin with. That process will be slow in reversing it. It will just be stopping immigration, stopping certain groups coming into our countries. And then, as the 50-year process begins, it speeds up how we do that to eventually... Well, we're going very fast, but we won't go into details there. Well, it's not starting at the, the top because in the news this week, uh, Prince Harry and uh, Meghan oh. Markle, uh, they're, they've welcomed their, their first I must... child in, in, into the world. Uh, I'd like to Archie. congratulate. I'd like to congratulate um, Her Majesty the Queen for her uh, new grandchild, and uh, congratulate uh, Harry and uh, his wife for their new baby. Uh, there's a big debate, would it be white or black? And it appears yeah. to be a white baby, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so but... we need to, um, you know, basically uh, work out cloning from ha uh, Prince Harry's balls, I think. I think that's got to be got to be the quote of the week. <laughs> because I... this is some kind of cure that maybe we can somehow weaponize Prince Harry's balls. You know what I mean? Like, we need to, like, somehow get in there, get samples, and then clone, you know, away we go. It's been made such a big <laughs> that is a joke, that, by the way. Like you know, when the royal wedding took place, that oh, he was you know marrying a a African American. I mean, she doesn't look that black, really. Well, she, her I father think... is white, so you know. Yeah. So was, uh, uh, Obama's mother was white. Mm. Cause I, I, one thing I did like about Obama was when he went to Ireland, he really was proud of his Irish ancestry because <laughs> of his mother, and he you could see he was like drinking, drinking like an Irishman, and like mm. I was like I almost had tears in my eyes because the guy was clearly half a fucking Irishman. Mm. Anyway, go ahead. I, I have no problem with like Prince Harry is entitled to to marry who. Yeah, he sure, wants, I agree with you. With, I agree. You're a libertarian. Wants, but... You'll be right. You know, it's it's the left who've made this. Oh, this is such a you know great thing for you know multiculturalism, the progressive like you know. Royal the baby's family. white. Mm. We won. This is white as white as I am. You know, white as you are. And there's all these like articles saying, oh, should the child be raised black? I mean, I know. I mean, it's a funny thing. Like, um, I have a friend who married a woman who was part Indian, and his children came out. I mean, he had very strong kind of Scottish genes. His children were all fucking white, white, whiter than white. So this whole idea that um. You know, that always ends badly. You know, like, actually, maybe it will, uh, um, you know, more white people, you know? Well, the, the boy, Archie, Fear of a White is, Planet. Is, is that the gonna, name of the show? Fear of a White Planet. Is which is gonna, like a kind of parody on uh, Fear of a Black Planet by Public Enemy. Is this what people... This is a kind of hysteria going on. You know, maybe the whole planet's going to turn out white. You know? <laughs> well, he's not going to become King Archie. Well, he's seventh King Archie, in line. that'd be good, wouldn't it? Is seventh that, in line? Yes. You never know. Bomb could go off. And there's also all these uh, media reports as well that they're they're going to raise the child gender neutral, um, raise the raise him feminist. Like, what? Well, given that, like, you know, those women's magazines, they always make up stuff. You don't know whether this is more fake news about the royal family. More fake news. I, I, I the one disappointment is that one of these new babies has not been called Richard. You know what I mean? I think we need Richard the Fourth. You know, he did, Richard the Fourth of England. Maybe I'll have to go and steal the throne. You know what I mean? Become Richard the Fourth because um, you know that's what we need. You know what I mean? We need someone yeah, because Richard the Third strikes terror into people's hearts. You know, because he was the great evil king. Richard the Fourth. He's the one we need. The nationalist king. When she did give birth, Meghan Markle, I got... Yeah? Because I have all the You're news alerts on my phone. Are like, you a monarchist? Um, I think that the royal family is what's holding the UK together. I agree. And I'm a strong monarchist. All the way. Like the, Big fan. The, the globalists, they have not been able to break the monarchy. I You're mean, right. All the news, like stations they're all outside the, the hospital they're all the royal watches there they cannot break the the royal family no and they that, can't it's solid yeah. yeah and so that's what's going that's basically what's holding britain together even like the the immigrants they they like they the all royal love family. it everyone loves it all over the world they love the royal family i think it's great mm. i'm a really big fan uh, my mother's always been a strong monarchist and uh, mm. you know she always uh, you know i mean it's a long cry from the the scandals of the 90s the the annus horribilis 
Yeah, uh, the, they're much the, loved the, now, the and they do provide a kind of traditionalist. Well, yeah. like, and every time they do one of those royal weddings, it's like a giant ad for nationalism. Well, yeah. Because there's just UK flags well, everywhere. Well, because William and Harry have been like model mm. model royals, they're they're what people aspire to. They haven't to. been bad. Well, and they like, and I liked Harry. He wore a swastika one day. <laughs> he was a bit of a funny troll. Well, See, he's a troller. I mean, Harry is a bit of a. Uh, He's like the bad boy. Yeah, yeah. William but is the good he, king. He you know. hasn't done anything like this really like that. Nothing that bad. That bad. Like, he's just naughty. Yeah, you know? he, he's just we admire like, that. Yeah. Like, he, he's, he's a royal. Like, he's, you know, well, he fought in Iraq. Good on him. So, good like, on him. He's, he gets he's, to go he's kill some done, Arabs. He's, he's all there. He, he's done his duty, but he's also yeah, he, he he's relatable Muslims. to the masses because he's done all the bad boy things. So yeah, he like, does. Hey, he's one of us. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I agree. Sort of, like, you never know the power of these people. And Prince Charles is interesting. When we get King Charles, he's actually... um. Well, Prince there's a Charles, video. Well, he's a globalist, though. Maybe, but yeah. like you know, he also is a fan of Julius of Ola. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a video where I mean, he praises he's a, he's a, traditionalism, where he praises the ideas of Julius of Ola. And I thought, my God, the next king is going to be mean, like a, a Julius of Ola. Let's remember, he's the one that nearly destroyed the monarchy in the nineties. So with one? Well, you know, with uh, the Di well, cause Diana was so beloved. Yeah, but they bumped her off. Mm. They had to. What else Allegedly. No, they did. <laughs> he's well, they and, bumped her off. You know, I mean, because. If you, I mean, the same with this new girl, you know, I mean, the, like, the royal family is protected by a whole group of people. I don't know if people know this, but they're like organizations that protect mm. the, uh, the bloodlines and everything. And the queen doesn't have to go, oh, please go and get rid of Princess Diana. She doesn't make that decision. Maybe Prince Philip makes it, but like someone like this decides, okay, well, that's enough of that. And because when someone begins to threaten that kind of hegemonic hold, other people are going to act to get rid of that problem. You know what I mean? And if you marry into that, not realizing that, you're a fucking idiot. Well, Meghan Markle, she's only married into it. She's not going to have too much. I influence. think so. Harry is a marginal figure, but that, not what Princess Diana wasn't. They were the heirs to the throne. Yeah. And that they were going to bring, she was going to marry Dario Fayed, and that they were going to be like father-in-law. Mm. That was not going to happen. Yeah. She and, had to go. And I'm sorry. I agree with the decision to get rid of Princess Diana. I, I mean, I like Princess Diana, but they had to execute her. I mean, absolutely. Bye. I mean, Prince Harry, he is, he is probably greatest contribution as a prince has been the Invictus game for war veterans. Who's which that, is Prince? Prince Harry. Oh, yeah. So, oh, he's good fun. He's good so, fun. So and Prince Charles is, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, I mean, he he'll supports, probably be dead before. He, probably, he supports the cl climate change, action on climate change. Yeah. I mean, he supports multicultural. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but also, too, we've been waiting a long time for King Charles. I mean, yeah, Queen well, Elizabeth ain't going nowhere, and even Prince Philip's still rocking around. I, I love that, that meme on Facebook where he crashes his car into the... He'd sit down to see the new baby and crash the car. It was a, obviously a joke. But, you know, I like Prince Philip. He's great. He's very old school. I love the way he always makes kind of like bad Oh, jokes. yes, yes. You know, like immigrant jokes and stuff. Yeah, like... Fantastic. Well, you know. He does that to break the ice with people. Someone wrote a defense of him. He says the reason he makes all these kind of politically incorrect jokes is because he's trying... Because everywhere you go when you're a royal, people think, oh... Yeah. You're a holy cunt. It's you know, I can't like... talk to you. But when he makes a stupid kind of almost pratfall, yeah. you know... Everyone kind of has a giggle. Yeah. And it breaks the ice. And that's why he's doing it. It's actually just a kind of personal um like way of breaking the ice you know like when he when he did recently like he asked like a nurse at a hospital like, where you're from the philippines he's like oh yes i see quite a, a lot of you like in these hospitals from that area and then there was another oh, one where, like they were uh, they, they were posing the king, for a photo and he was just like oh just take the fucking photo and i'm a person who hates like posing for photos yeah, and yeah. so like i could relate like yeah just take it he's great uh, uh prince philip he's great i mean that's the one thing i mean look it's kind of stupid when tony abbott wanted to knight him or something yeah, but yeah. you could tell tony abbott was just kind of in love with mm. prince philip you know what i mean like and like from a kind of nationalist kind of fun politically incorrect way i mean tony abbott i liked as a prime minister but he did have a charisma problem you know what i mean like uh, he was a bit like peter dutton or bill shorten bill shorten doesn't have a lot of charisma and skymo i think you know um to begin with i wasn't immediately won over but now when i see his campaign he comes across in a very good way i think that is winning in an a kind of populist or general election kind of way. I think a lot of people will be won over by Scott Morrison's personality, which um, is a good thing for any political party. Well, we'll see. We're entering we'll the, the final countdown. Well, Richard, it's been good to it's have been great, Tim. Thank you for on the show. Me. And Melbourne Underground Film Festival. Call for Entries is on. open. And um, yep, the, go to the muff.com.au and you can enter film, film, film three-way. Film Freeway, uh, op entries open until around July, and the festival will be uh, happening again down in Moorabbin and at a venue in the city um, in around mid-October. Yeah.
So thank you for that. Thank you for having me on. It's been a great honor to have a chat and a lot of fun. So, And uh, new episodes report from Tiger Mountain are coming soon. Yes, next week. Next week we've got report from Tiger Mountain back on the air. You know, until they ban us, you know. But yeah. hopefully they're going to keep, you know, the unshackled and report on air, fighting the good fight. Get out there, vote nationalist, vote conservative, vote right wing in the upcoming Australian election. Let's unite people, unite the right. And that's the show for today. It is now only two days until election day, so another reminder, as with every election, we are producing an election night live stream. This time it will be an Uncuckables production with XYZ and the Rational Rise. We have decided that we'll be streaming to not just the Uncuckables YouTube channel, but also to the Unshackles one and also Maddie's Modern Life, as not all live followers have subscribed to the Uncuckables channel. So tune in from 6pm Australian Eastern Standard Time on Saturday the 18th of May when the polls close as we analyse the results as they come in. We'll be having a pre-election Uncuckables episode on our regular Thursday night stream that's exclusively on the Uncuckables channel at 8.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time, so make sure that you are subscribed so you can be notified when we go live. While we are still going strong on Facebook, given all the constant deplatformings of right-wing personalities, we have made sure we've got a presence on free speech social media. We are on gab.ai slash the unshackled. We are also on minds.com slash the underscore unshackled. We also have a MeWe page at mewe.com slash p slash the unshackled. And we also have our growing Telegram channel on the ever-growing encrypted messaging service. So you can find us there at t.me slash the unshackled. Remember that we rely on the financial support of you, our followers, to produce the amount of content that we do. You can pledge over at patreon.com slash the unshackled or directly via paypal.me slash the unshackled. We also have our premium membership option on our website, the unshackled.net slash support options slash premium membership. Thank you to all those who are contributing on a regular basis. It all goes a long way. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next show. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.